Initially, when it came to making this video, I was thinking, all right, I do the intro, add the music and all that, add all the patrons, the list that pops up, and shout out to the patrons, by the way. Um, but then I was like, you know what, no, let's just get straight to it. Uh, and, and the question that we're getting straight to, a uh, question that has been asked amongst Ravens fans all over, um, should the Ravens fire their offensive coordinator, Greg Roman? And some people feel like, yes, they certainly should. They need to. They should have been done it. It needs to happen. And some people feel like, well, no, I don't think that they should. It was just one bad game. It doesn't need to happen. And like I explained briefly, uh, when we did the recap of the uh, Dolphins game, I can understand both sides. Um, but we're going to dive into it just a little bit more and, and really try to get a viewpoint from both points of view, both sides of the fence when it comes to Ravens and their offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. So, of course, the Ravens, uh, the other day against the Dolphins, um, just terrible, terrible. Uh, the play calling was terrible. The execution uh, was terrible. Just the lack of adjustments were terrible. And it, it was just a very, very, very bad game. And I remember during the game, I was like, oh, no. I, I said, oh, yeah, Greg, Greg Roman's trolling. He, he's, he's trolling with this one. Because I'm like, the, with, with all the screen passes that they kept calling on third down. And with, with that, too, I know some people were like, oh, that was Lamar actually audible into those screen passes. But then some people were like, oh, well, maybe that's the only uh, audibles that Greg Roman allows Lamar to audible, too. So whatever it is, it was just all kinds of bad from first quarter to fourth quarter. And the, the, one of the saddest parts about it was that the Ravens offense that features one of the best just players, one of the best just straight up ballers in the league. Like this guy, there's nobody in the NFL that can do what Lamar can do. There's nobody. And when you have somebody like that, it's like, how can your team, how, how can they only score a touchdown when they're aided by the refs. It, it shouldn't take that. Like, it shouldn't have come down to that. Like, that was so sad. It was so sad. But anyway, um, that game was just, I think, in my opinion, that was the worst game of the year. And the score was a lot closer than the Bengals game was. But to me, my opinion, that was the worst game of the year because in the Bengals game, what I think it was, it wasn't play calling. Play calling wasn't even bad. In the Bengals game, it was execution. Offensive line was not blocking at all. Defense was not tackling at all. And it was those big plays that end up breaking the game loose. Of course, you got Bengals tight end running wide open for two touchdowns. And then there was a lack of tackling on one of them. And then you got a Jamar Chase. <laughs> he wasn't wide open. His 82-yard touchdown, that three people missed tackles, maybe four. But it was just execute, bad execution. But then, um, in this Bengals game, it was just bad Every, everything. I mean, in the Dolphins game, excuse me. In the Dolphins game, it was bad everything. Everything. Ex like I said, execution, coaching, play call, all, all that stuff. But anyway, back to Greg Roman. Um, for the people that say yes, let, let's try to understand why they say yes. And it's not just because of the Dolphins game. It's not. This has been something that's been talked about a lot of times throughout this season. I, I've seen it so much in the comment section. Got a lot of DMs on it over and over and over from so many different people. Uh, seen it on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. I've seen it a lot. Greg Roman needs to be fired. Greg Roman needs to be replaced. Greg Roman needs to be out of there. But why? Well, again, back to what I was saying about Lamar. You, you got one of the best players in the league. And these, these slow starts... That the Ravens have been coming out with is 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 inexcusable. It's inexcusable. Like you you have talent, you have weapons, you 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 have just you you have all this stuff in your arsenal. Why why are Ravens starting out so slow? And I know you could be like, oh well, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and that's true. Even with the slow starts, the Ravens still find themselves at six and three. They still. Find themselves a six and three. But one of the biggest question marks about Greg Roman um, has been there's the lack of adjustments. Now, the Dolphins game, they, they highlighted that big time. Now, another thing, too, um, that has highlighted the lack of adjustments has been the situation with the personnel. Now, we know 
everybody in this on this roster is hurt. We got so many injuries, offense, defense, everywhere. But specifically with offense, obviously J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, um, and, and Justice Hill. And then uh, on the offensive line, Ronnie Stanley's out. Patrick McCarry's out. Ben Cleveland went out. Uh, Ty Phillips was out for a while. You have been banged up. And then Sammy Watkins, he missed a couple games. You're missing Nick Boyle. He still hasn't returned yet. Um, so you've been, it's been rough. It's been pretty rough. Uh, but this is why you have to adjust. Even though, yeah, the, 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 the hand that the Ravens were dealt this year has been really bad when it comes to injuries. Probably worse in the league. Especially when it comes to significant injuries to significant players. But you have to adjust. Why are, are we not calling more plays to where that offensive line gets more help? Something that we talked about a lot on here over the years, not just this year, but over the years, where are the screen plays? One thing is it, crazy because Mac Jones, rookie quarterback, rookie quarterback, and one thing that the Patriots do, and they did this with Tom Brady too for years. They did it with Tom Brady for the longest. The, the screen game and the short passing game, Ravens have none of that. None. They don't have a short passing game at all. Why is that? Why don't the Ravens have a short passing game? All their stuff is intermediate or deep shots, and that's it. So with the short passing game, that would help the offensive line so much. Why? Because they, they get to block for a lot less amount of time on, on any given play. And it also helps Lamar get into a rhythm and helps the receivers and tight ends, uh, even running backs get into a rhythm. And some of that's on Lamar, too. Because sometimes Lamar, he'll, he'll always be looking for that kill shot, but he won't take the underneath stuff. So Lamar got to work on that, too. But why, why don't we incorporate screens to the running backs? That's something else. Like, again, it, Patriots obviously aren't the only team that do it, but they do a phenomenal job of helping their rookie quarterback out with that. And their offensive line, too. Because, like, even in yesterday's game, Miles Garrett, and we all know Miles Garrett, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, if not the best. But anyway, Miles Garrett, you know he's a problem. He, he brings it. And so, what did they do? They ran screens to Miles Garrett's side to where they're like, all right, we're going to let Miles Garrett think he's coming in free. But oh, no. It's a screen pass. So, Ravens, <laughs> like, Ravens could pick. Pick and choose where they wanted to run screen passes to, to their running backs. Re reason being because everybody comes in free on Ravens offensive line. Everybody does. Literally everybody. Every game this year, except the Chiefs game. That, like, the Chiefs game was like the only game where they were not getting pressure on Lamar Jackson. But every single game. And again, we know people are hurt. But with people being hurt, you have to figure out a way to hide those deficiencies. You got to figure out a way to cover that up as best you can. And the Ravens just simply have not done that at all. They have not done that at all. I know in this Dolphins game, it got highlighted big time. Hey, where, where all the slant play? Like the middle of the field has been wide open all night. People said that in hindsight, but people said that in foresight too. It, 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 it didn't just take some Kurt Warner video for people to see that. People saw that whether you were watching the game or you were there at the game. People saw that the middle of the field was wide open. And Dolphins, again, Dolphins, they were sinning so much. But Ravens, of course, the intermediate passing game or the deep shots. And that was it. The short stuff, nah, they, they ain't taking that. But with a screenplay, it just helps so much because it slows down the pass rush. Now, another reason for the people who are on the, the fire Greg Roman side. Another reason why they would say for him to be relieved of his duties would be because of the running game. Now, not because the running game isn't what it once was, because none of us should expect it to be what it once was, because we don't have a J.K. Dobbins or a Gus. We don't have those guys. We have a Le'Veon Bell. We have a Latavius Murray. We have a Devontae Freeman. Now, um, something that the Ravens have been doing this year is sharing the wealth. All right, you get a carry, 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 you get a carry. And you're not letting guys get into a rhythm. You're not. And I know the Ravens are like, I feel like the best word to describe it is infatuated 
Ravens are infatuated with Le'Veon Bell, and the Ravens are determined to show the world, because the Ravens, they can be very stubborn, but they have determined to show the world, Le'Veon Bell still got it, y'all. He still got it. And I'm not necessarily saying that he doesn't, but whenever he's in the game, like I said, everything like slows down. And yeah, he got a couple touchdowns, and it was cool, but for Le'Veon Bell to make a play, everything got to be perfect. The, the Ravens don't have the offensive line for Le'Veon Bell right now. They really don't. They don't. They, they just simply don't have it. And I mean, hopefully it can improve over over the rest of the season. But that's a tough ask for the Ravens. But they are since they're so infatuated with Le'Veon Bell, they they force feed Le'Veon Bell. And I mean, again, I will, I would love for all the running backs to be hot. But let's get one hot first. And even with Devontae Freeman, even if he is hot. He'll have, he'll have a big run. He'll have a nice play. And then he'll be like, all right, okay, 17, come on out. Come on, Le'Veon. Come on out. And it's like it just it, it, it slows down the, the offense. And it's like, well, what's going on? And then it's like they're so busy force-feeding Le'Veon Bell. And, they, again, they've been giving Devontae his a lot more now too, but it seems like they almost want to just match their carries just to be like, all right, we gave 17 carries to, to Devontae Freeman. Oh, I don't think they've even given him that much this season yet. But it's like we giving him, we give Devontae Freeman 14 carries. All right, Le'Veon Bell, you, you have around 11. Because it's, it's, like it's, it's like they feel like he's going to get jealous or something. And he might. I mean, he's a, he, he was once a star in the league. So, I mean, there, there's that, that, that ego that the, a, lot, a lot of these guys, I'm sure, have. And, and their pride. And like, hey, I, I started in this league before. I want to start again. I want more opportunity. But the Ravens' infatuation with Le'Veon Bell, in my opinion, has led to a lot of demise in the running game because they don't go with the hot hand. And another thing, too, another reason with the running game, too, Ravens have been so busy um, just being angry and upset with Tyson Williams that you're letting a, a, a potential big play. You, 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 you're, you're so busy being upset over Tyson Williams' first couple of games. And, yeah, that Bengals game, I, I thought that Bengals game, was that was a wrap. But even before that, you're so busy being upset with Tyson Williams and being done with Tyson Williams over whatever happened in the Raiders game that you're like, oh, okay, we're not going to do anything to try to get this guy to build his confidence back up. We're just going to have him sit. We're just going to let, let, him, let him just sit on the sidelines. And even when he's in the game, we ain't hardly going to give him the ball. He's just a little deep. We ain't doing nothing with Tyson Williams. You're so busy stuck on what happened early on that in the long run, you, like this guy's confidence just continues dropping. When Latavius Murray comes back, you know he's going to be inactive. We, we know that's coming. So even with that, it's like you got somebody that could be another good runner. Yeah, Has he fumbled a couple times? Yeah, he has. Has Le'Veon Bell fumbled? I don't think so. And I don't think Devontae Freeman has. He, well, maybe on one handoff, maybe, but uh, I don't remember. Anyway. You like you 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 you're wasting potential right there. You're wasting potential. So that's another reason for the people on the the, the fire G row side. And then, for also for a lot of people on the fire G row side, they say they feel like Lamar is just he's past G row. Said he feel like they said he feel like he's past G row. That G row is almost holding him back, and just not letting him. Do what he can do. Not really letting this offense get loose like it should be. Like, man, I, I told you all the other day. When going into the Dolphins game, I'm like, all right, let's go. Hey, we got Sammy back. We got Rashad Bateman in Hollywood. Oh, all three of our boys at the same time. Of course, still got Mark Andrews. And running. Oh, okay, let's go. But it didn't feel like we had him. It didn't feel like we had him at, at all. And then another thing with all... Uh, I, didn't un I did not understand why Rashad Bateman in that Dolphins game, why was he on the sideline so much? Is he a rookie? Yeah. But is he one of your best receivers? Yeah. He, and he's shown he can play. He can play in his league. He is NFL ready. He showed that from the first game. He is NFL ready. And when you throw in the ball, usually good things happen. A lot of first downs. 
So the just the 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 usage of the personnel can be quite confusing sometimes. Um and that's been another thing with uh with the people on the fire Giro side why they want him gone. And they also feel like sometimes the Ravens try to get a bit cute. Um sometimes the Ravens they they get away from themselves. Uh, sometimes they go away from what's working. Like it's 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 sad sometimes because there's some games when we watch it and we're like, whoa, they're sticking with what's working. Like and, it, and it's it's crazy. It, it it can blow our minds sometimes because a lot of times Ravens just they they don't do that. So those those are just some of the reasons and factors for the people who are on the fire G Rose side now. You flip it to the other side. There are people who say, no, nope, Ravens should not fire Greg Roman. They shouldn't. Now, the reason with them, if you look at overall this year, the Ravens, I'm not sure what the ranking is after uh, after the Dolphins game. Um, and then, of course, after all the, the Week 10 games, too, uh, and the, 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 the Rams and 49ers, they still got to play tonight on Monday Night Football. But... The Ravens on the top, I think they're the top top rushing team in the league, and in passing they're ranked like ninth. So if you look at those numbers, you're like, hold up, like okay, let's go. And even just to have seen the jump, the the dramatic jump uh, from last year's passing to this year's passing, it has been crazy. Like I thought going into this season, all right, if they jump like five six spots, all right, that's cool. Like, that's, that's all I'm expecting. I ain't expecting them to be in the top five, not even top ten. I said I always said it would be nice, but I don't expect that. Like, that'd be crazy to expect that. Why should we expect that? But they did. It made a crazy jump. Um, so that's big. And obviously, shout out to Kiki and TT. You already know what time it is with them. Um, but back to Greg Roman. And another thing, too, when you look at the top scoring offenses over the past couple of years, Really, ever since Lamar took over as a starter, ever since he started in 2019, they are number one, I believe. They Nobody has scored more points than them ever since Lamar took over. So for the people who say, no, 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 don't fire Giro, you could understand that part. And then um, for the, another thing with the people saying don't fire Giro, you, you, you never want to just make a knee-jerk reaction to one game. You never want to do that. And that's not what good teams do. They, 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 don't, they don't say, oh, man, we, we had a bad game. Fire everybody. Fans do that, but good teams don't do that. In order for, for people to get fired, it has to be a consistent. It has to be consistent all the time. When, when good teams fire people, it should be when there's a, the consistent, this pattern of just being terrible if things just really not working out so for the people who say not to fire Giro they're like hey okay Ravens had a bad game Giro had a bad game but really everybody had a bad game it's not just Giro but offensive side there, there was a bad game and then um for the people who for the people who say don't fire Giro they can look at this year and they can look at just the offense's output what they've done. Even though they started off slow in most of their games, they finished off powerfully. And they've won six out of nine games. And they were in a position to win seven out of those nine games. Because in, in two, in the Dolphins game, you got whooped. And in the Bengals game, you got whooped. And I know there, um, there are a lot of people that, that also look at the schedule on the flip side and be like, oh, well, Ravens could be one in seven or one in 11, whatever, one in eight. Blah, blah, blah. But they're not. They're not. And under G. Rowe as offensive coordinator, when you look at the records, what, 2019, they went 14 and 2, 2020. They went 11 and 5, and one of those games was Lamar was out with COVID. And then right now, they're, they're 6 and 3. 
So the people on the not firing Jiro side, they can be like, look, like y'all complaining about Jiro, but look at the team's record. The Ravens have still been winning. They've been winning. They're winners. So why will we get rid of an offensive coordinator who has brought consistency to the record? Because that, that's another thing, too. That's another thing with the Ravens. We have been so used to, under Harbaugh, first with Flacco, of course. All right, we got this offensive coordinator. All right, he's straight. Okay, got this offense. Okay, all right, time to fight. Get, this, get rid of this guy. Get rid of him. <clears throat> Flacco for like a, after a year, after two years. All right, get rid of this offensive coordinator. The same thing will happen over and over and over and over. And over. It just kept happening. Get rid of that guy. Oh, this offensive coordinator table. Oh, he's bad. He's bad. Get rid of him. Flacco didn't really get to have that consistency. Early on, he did with um, Cam Cameron. He had him for a little while, but there was just a lack of consistency throughout. Um, so or maybe it was the person before Cam Cameron. There was somebody who he had for like two, three years, I believe, as the offensive coordinator. But throughout the majority, it was okay. Fire him, fire him, fire him, fire him, fire him. And all, and all these guys would end up getting fired. Um, so, or they would move on. Shout out to uh, Caldwell, um, who became Detroit Lions head coach. And, well, that ended up being a big yikes for them. But anyway, um, so this, this is different right now. Because Lamar Jackson... He's had, as a starter, he's had the same offensive coordinator as a starter at the beginning of the season. He's had the same offensive coordinator throughout his whole time, starting week one. Obviously not his rookie season because, <coughs> excuse me, that was Marty Morningweg. And, um, yeah, you know, the Ravens, at the end of that year, because Greg Roman was the run game coordinator at that time. I know <laughs> A lot of fans right now like, hey, man, Greg, Greg Roman need to just go back to being run game coordinator. But Greg Roman was a run game coordinator at that time. And that's when they, they came to that, 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 that mutual decision to part ways with Marty Morningweg when um, John Harbaugh apparently offered him a passing game specialist position and he turned it down. That's just a fancy way of saying he got fired without actually saying he got fired. Again, Harbaugh, you know Harbaugh going to take care of his boys. He's going to take care of his boys. If you want his boys, he will... Give you the most, the, the, the prettiest exit. You will have the prettiest firing ever. The prettiest firing. And, and that's the one thing about Harbaugh that's like, he, again, he put on for his boys. Hashtag hood Harbaugh. You already know what time it is. But anyway, um, with Greg Roman, they've been winning. They've been winning. And that, for anybody that says not to fire Greg Roman, that would probably be the biggest point that you could make. That would be the biggest point that you could make in my eyes on why they shouldn't fire Greg Roman because the team has been winning. And that's what it comes down to, winning. That's it. That's it. And the Ravens have won a lot more than they've lost. It's crazy because <clears throat> we could... You could think, even if you include Lamar's rookie year, but again, Greg Roman was an offensive coordinator, so exclude that. But we can actually remember all the losses that the Ravens have had with Greg Roman as an offensive coordinator. There was the Browns game in, in 2019. There was a Browns game, and there was a Chiefs game. And, of course, the playoff game. Yikes. That was, like, now that, that was bad for G. Rowan. Because they completely like went away from everything that worked. They went straight to plan B without even trying plan A. It was, it was so bad. I think the running backs, like, between the both of them, they had, like, six or nine carries. Something crazy low. Something crazy low. That game, oh, that game was all types of bad. But 2019, those two losses, Browns and Chiefs. Um, 2020, it was... The Chiefs, because this was last year, it was the Chiefs, it was the Patriots, it was the Titans in overtime. Um, it was, wow, well, I guess I forgot. The Chiefs, the Titans, the Patriots, who else did we lose to? And it was just like, oh boy, here we go. You know what? I can't remember right now. But it was only two more. Oh, the Steelers. 
the Steelers. Oh, the Steelers and the Steelers. There we go. Because it was the one game where it came down to the, the last play. Lamar threw it to Willie Sneed, and that ended. I know some people, oh, it could have been passing the fans. Oh, it's cool. But, and then it was, of course, the COVID game without Lamar. So, and then this year, uh, it's been the Dolphins. Oh, boy. <laughs> the Bengals um, and the Raiders in overtime. <clears throat> so, at least with, uh, besides the Raiders game, at least with the other two losses, like, they didn't come down to the last minute, and we knew the Raiders were losing. So, take, there, there goes a positive spin on that. Um, but anyway, Ravens fans that say that Greg Roman should not be fired, like I said, that's that's the biggest point that they could make. He's been winning. They've been winning. And <clears throat> so, again, I can understand both sides. I can understand points from both sides. I can understand just how some people will be for it and some people will be against it. Um, but right now, he ain't going anywhere. Uh, so just got to hope that things change. And, I mean, if you look, you, you look at – even just this past weekend alone, just this past weekend alone, Steelers, like, should they fire their offensive coordinator? They they just tied it with the Lions. The Lions. Steelers had a chance of jumping first place in the AFC, and they tied with the Lions. Browns. Woo-hoo. Browns. They just got dogged by the Patriots. Dogged. Like from start to finish, and even though Baker Mayfield got injured, he probably he probably glad he got hurt because he ended up getting getting uh, being able to sit out the rest of that game. He's like, oh, I ain't trying to go back in there for this. This already been ugly enough. So I mean, the NFL is crazy, man. And they, even the Raiders, Raiders fell for the trap game against the Chiefs. <laughs> but now, nah, um, <clears throat> so NFL is just it's crazy like that. It's crazy like that. So, however you feel about Greg Roman, hey, it, it's it's cool. It's cool whether you want him gone, whether you don't want him gone. I understand both sides, and both sides have great points. And I know in the comment section is going to be filled with people continuing to make great points on why they feel he should or should not remain a Ravens offensive coordinator. But anyway, um, like a lot of people are hoping that he ends up being, but. Right now, uh, he just won't be. Greg Roman, I'm out.